twice a day and before every date. Use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Ladies and gentlemen, Colgate Dental Cream presents the new Dennis Day Show, written by Frank Galen, starring Dennis Day with Sharon Douglas. And with us tonight to give Dennis a send-off on his own program, Don Wilson and Jack Benny. Here's Dennis to sing, Without You. I'm so lonely and blue When I'm without you I don't know what to do cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning your teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly. Brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in 7 out of 10 cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Yes, and Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests show Colgate Dental Cream preferred for flavor over other toothpaste tested. So try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And use Colgate Dental Cream twice a day and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. wonder when a brand new radio show is presented for the first time exactly how the program came into being. And so tonight, instead of bringing you the first in our series called A Day in the Life of Dennis Day, we're going to give you a sort of a preview of the program showing you just how it was born. Let's go back a few months to July. The Colgate people have just told Dennis they want him to do a new fall radio series for them, providing he can get permission from a certain violinist with whom he's affiliated on Sunday night. <laughs> And so, on this warm summer evening, we find a most unusual scene taking place. Now, you listen to me, Jack Benny. I'm sick of arguing with you. Eight long years I've been with you, slaving away week after week. And what do you pay me? Shut up! I'll do the talking tonight. I'll tell you what you pay me. I've got my contract right here. $35 a week for the first 50 years. and thirty-seven fifty for the 50 years after that. <laughs> Not even a kind word have I ever gotten from you. Not once in those eight years have you ever said to me, Dennis, you sang fine tonight. Or, Dennis, you mowed my lawn swell today. <laughs> well, it's over, Benny, see? I've got a chance to do my own program at last. And if you get in my way, I'll squash you like I'd step on a grape. Now, do I get that permission, or do I have to beat it out of you? You heard me. Beat it out of you. See, that's what I'd like to say to Jack Benny, only I'm too scared. <laughs> but scared or not, off 
our hero went to the enchanted castle to do battle with the wicked giant, who was known far and wide as Blue Eyes. He'd gone no further than a block or two, though, when suddenly he was greeted by a friend. Hey, Dennis! Oh, hiya, Don. Look, if you'll excuse me, I'm in a terrible hurry to get to Mr. Benny's house, and I... Jack Benny's house? Now, what's up, kid? Well, the most wonderful things happened, Don. The Colgate people want me to do a radio program for them in the fall. Only I gotta get Mr. Benny's permission. Do you think he'll give it to me, Don? Do you? Dennis, I've known Jack a long, long time. There are people in this town who claim he's cheap, small, that he'd never give anybody a break. Well, you're going to find out whether or not they've misjudged him. Gee, Don, have they misjudged him? Nope, you haven't got a chance, kid. <laughs> What do I do, Don? I'm sunk. Well, not necessarily, Dennis. There's still a way to get around Jack Benny that uh, he'll never miss. Flattery, kid. Flattery? Sure, say something nice about him. The old ham goes for it every time. <laughs> Gee, it might work at that. Ah, it's a cinch. Just think of some good point he's got and harp on it. Some good point he's got? Mm -hmm. Let's see now. I guess I'll have to make something up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Tell him he's honest or intelligent. Lie your head off. I will, Don. And thanks. Boy, am I glad I ran into you. And so our hero continued on his way. At length, he came to the enchanted castle where Blue Eyes dwelt. The monster himself answered the doorbell, and into his large and startled ears, Dennis poured the story of the golden opportunity. And, concluded our hero... So you see, Mr. Benny, what a great chance this is for me. My own show. An opportunity to really amount to something. To hold my head up with anyone. To which Blue Eyes replied, uh, Personally, I think the whole thing is a trick to make money. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Dennis. I can't let you do it. But gosh, I Mr. said Benny. no, Dennis. Why do you need another job? Don't I pay you a very good salary every week? Yes, but this would mean a few extra dollars on the side. I could buy little luxuries I've always wanted, like bread. <laughs> There's no reason why you have to live like a king. But it wouldn't cost you anything, Mr. Benny. The Colgate people pay me the extra money. You wouldn't be out one single cent out of mattress. Then, uh, then I told you to forget it. Now, good night. Well, okay, Mr. Benny. I know that whatever your reason is for turning me down, it's for my own good. Because, well, you're the kindest man I ever met. Look, Dennis, I'm tired of... Hmm? <laughs> uh, what was that, kid? I said you're the kindest man I ever met. Who? Me? Yes, sir. And I respect your judgment, because you're the greatest radio star the world has ever known. Well, I... Me? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, now, Dennis. Yes, you are, Mr. Benny. You're the master comedian of all time. The greatest comedy genius who ever lived. Oh, Dennis, I... I wouldn't say that. You would if you were in my shoes. <laughs> well, gee, kid, I didn't know you felt that way about me. The kindest man you ever met, huh? Yes, sir. And good and sweet and pure. Oh. Well. And adorable. <laughs> well, me? Yes, sir. Well, uh, well, just what sort of a program were you planning to do, Dennis? Well, it's something like yours. You know, a comedy program, only with laughs. <laughs> uh, funny stuff, eh? Yeah, but we tell a little story every week. It's what they call situation comedy. Situation comedy? That's a radio term. It means Porsche faces life with jokes. I see. Well, what, uh, what kind of a part have you got? Well, I'm a small-town boy who works behind a soda fountain. I'm supposed to act like a dopey kid. I hope they'll believe me in the part. Well, if you strain yourself, they might. <laughs> Gee, I hope so. Well, anyway, I work in this drugstore, and my sweetheart is one of Wait the... Wait a minute. You have a sweetheart? Oh, yes, sir. Her name is Mildred Anderson, and she has a gorgeous figure and a very pretty face. If you care for that sort of thing in a girl. Well, I... Who does?
husband. Gee, I've seen some of your dates. Never mind. <laughs> now, Dennis, let me get this straight. Do you mean that on your new program you're going to play love scenes opposite a girl? Well, gee, that's the best way to play them, isn't it? <laughs> yes, but I never thought... Uh, I don't know why. I mean, you always seem so young, Dennis. Young? Yes. I, I always sort of linked your name with Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> oh, I haven't taken her out in weeks. <laughs> I mean, no, no. Dennis, I mean love scenes. You, you just don't seem the right type for them, kids. Oh, I can play love scenes, Mr. Benny, and I can prove it. I have a record with me of the program we auditioned for the sponsor, and there's a wonderful love scene in it between Mildred and me. If you'd like to hear it, I'd be... Okay, okay, kid. Uh, put it on the phonograph. Yes, sir. This will show you, Mr. Benny. The scene is supposed to be the back porch of Mildred's house, and Mildred and I are out there all alone in the dark. Listen. <laughs> Oh, Dennis, it's a lovely night, isn't it? Uh-huh. The moon is so bright and full. Isn't it beautiful? Uh-huh. <laughs> and those stars glittering high in the heavens. Doesn't it just fill your soul with poetry? Uh-huh. <laughs> Robert Browning and Elizabeth Barrett must have sat under a sky like this, Dennis. And Napoleon and Josephine. And maybe even Mark Antony and Cleopatra. Uh-huh. Well, Boyer can go back to France now. He's finished. <laughs> oh, what you've heard so far is nothing, Mr. Benny. You're telling me. <laughs> Just wait till I get warmed up. Oh, Dennis, it's so nice out here all alone. Just the two of us, isn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> Dennis, you say, uh-huh, once more on this scene, I'm going to hit you with a phonograph. And just think, Dennis, Mama won't be home for two whole hours. Are you glad? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a switch. <laughs> okay, Dennis, that's enough. Turn it off. So that's the kind of dialogue you're going to do on your program, eh? Yes, sir. Well, if you don't think it'll be too deep for the average listener. Oh, no, sir. Okay, kid. Okay, go ahead. You mean I can go on for Colgate? Gee, Mr. Benny, thanks. Thanks a million. Oh, that's all right, kid. You are kind. You are sweet. Oh. You are pure. You are adorable. Oh, thanks, thanks. Kid. And what's more, you're wholesome, too. Good night, Mr. Benny. Night has now fallen over the enchanted castle, and Blue Eyes has just tucked himself into bed. He's thinking over the events of the evening as he starts to doze off. Well, Dennis is a good kid. He deserves his own show. After all, I do love the boy. We're like father and son, practically. I just had to give him a break. Besides, I'll grab off a piece of his salary as an agent or something. <laughs> boy, this bed feels good. Who knows, Dennis might be a big success. Five years from now, he's liable to be a star. And maybe some of the comedians who are on top now won't even be able to find a job. Uh. Yes, sir, five years can make a big difference in the radio business. Uh, big difference. season, the Jack Benny program, featuring Dennis Day, with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Don Wilson, and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now we meet the star of our show. And here once again to usher in the 1948 season, the Jack Benny, Dennis Day program, with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Don Wilson, and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now we meet the two stars of our show. Season, the Dennis Day Jack Benny program. With Mary Livingston, Rochester, Don Wilson, and Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now we meet the two stars of our show. And here once 
again to usher in the 1950 season, the Dennis Day Program, with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Don Wilson, Bill Harris and his orchestra, and Jack Benny. <laughs> in the 1951 season, the Dennis Day Program, with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Don Wilson, Phil Harris, Miss Orchestra, and Red Skelton. <laughs> yeah, uh, how do you do? I wonder if I might be permitted to see uh, Mr. Dennis Day in his dressing room. Uh, what's the name, bud? Benny. Jack Benny. Now, how do you spell it? Uh, B-E-N-N-Y. Benny. I, uh, I used to be something of a radio star myself a few years back. <laughs> huh? Oh, sure, sure, Jack Benny. I remember you now. Sure. Yes, yes. Yeah, you, you were the fellow with the Popeyes and all them daughters. No, 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 I, no. I was a fellow with a violin and a Maxwell, and I used to have a polar bear named Carmichael. Don't you remember Rochester? No, we ain't had a show out of that place in years. <laughs> For your information, Rochester wasn't a town. It was a gold mine. <laughs> I mean, well, anyway, can I see Mr. Day or, or can't I? Yeah, I guess you can go on back. Uh, Mr. Day's dressing room is the first one on the left. Thank you. No, Daryl, I couldn't consider it. No, really, the money is ridiculous, Daryl. Two million dollars to make a picture. I should get at least as much as Kenny Baker or Frank Parker. I'm sorry, Daryl, the deal is definitely off. Yes, uh, something I can do for you, my good man? Gee, don't you recognize me, Mr. Day? I'm Jack Benny. Oh, of course. How are you, Jack? How's everything? Oh, fine, fine, Mr. Day. Where are you working these days, Jack? Well, I'm... <laughs> I'm not doing anything regular at the moment. Of course, I get an occasional guest shot on the Jack Kirkwood show. <laughs> of forming a trio with Jack Haley and Fred Allen. <laughs> Two Jacks and a jerk. Were... <laughs> You've been offered a quick week at Flapsy Maxie's already. Uh... Good, that's fine. But to tell the truth, Mr. Day, I, I would like to get back into radio, and I was wondering if your show has a spot that might... Well, I may have something for you at that, Jack. How about doing a violin solo every week in the spot where I used to sing my song? Gee, that's... See, that's swell, Mr. Day. Uh, how, how much would a thing like that pay? Well, you're an old friend, Jack, and I, I feel I owe you something from the past, so let's say uh, $35 a week. <laughs> $35 a week? You mustn't think of the money, kid. Think of the opportunity in it for you. <laughs> yes, but Mr. Day... You make good on my show, kid. You're set in radio for life. What's money compared to a thing like that? Well, I, I know, Mr. Day, but Kid, I... you don't want a big salary these days. The taxes eat it up anyway. But, but, sir... Why, do you realize that $35 for a three-minute solo was $11.67 a minute? I know, but, sir... I... That amounts to $218,764 a year. And you say it's too little. I have the strangest feeling I've heard this before. <laughs> well, what do you say, Jack? Is it a deal of 35 a week? No. No, it isn't. And let me out of here. Why, Jack? This never would have happened if I hadn't let you do your own program for Colgate back in 1946. I never should have done it. I, I hate myself. I hate myself for doing it. Do you hear? I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate myself. I, I... Oh, my goodness. Why do I always have these horrible dreams? Jack Benny, I've changed my mind about letting you do your own program. It's out, you understand? Out? 
Yeah. Gosh, Mr. Benny, why? Because you're a tightwad, that's why. You're as cheap as I am, and I can't stand anyone that cheap. <laughs> the whole game show is off. That's final. Okay, Mr. Benny. I guess maybe what Fred Allen said about you was right. Dennis, I... Fred Allen said something about me? What did he say? He said you wouldn't let me do my own show because I'm not paying you any commission. Oh, yeah? Allen said that, eh? Well, just for that, kid, you can go right ahead and do your own show. And as far as my commission is concerned, that's up to you. <laughs> See, that's well, Mr. Benny. Yes, sir. Well, go right ahead, kid, and do that show for Colgate. I mean, who believes in dreams, anyhow? And I hope you'll be a big success, kid. I'll be listening in next week when you go on with your first day in the life of Dennis Day. I want you to know the whole gang will be pulling for you. I know someday you're going to be a big star, Dennis. Thanks, Mr. Benny. Only don't forget one thing, kid. You're still on my program, too, you know. Rehearsals are at 12 o'clock sharp, and that doesn't mean one minute after. You understand? Yes, sir. And by the way, my lawn needs cutting. Get over to the house this afternoon. <laughs> Before Dennis returns with a song, here's an important reminder. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And now our Colgate players want to show you just how important that is. Listen. Jeepers, did you see that fancy freeze-out your sister just handed me? That I did, Tom, that I did. You cut no ice with her, and that's a fact. Yeah, well, what's the brush-off all about, John? Well, if you're asking me, Tom, I'd say see your dentist. And here's what Tom found out. Scientific tests have proved that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, Colgate Dental Cream's safe polishing agent brings out the natural sparkle of your teeth, cleans them thoroughly and safely. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Right, Tom? Right. And what a grand wake-up flavor Colgate's has. No wonder nationwide tests show Colgate Dental Cream preferred for flavor over other toothpaste tested. So, to clean your teeth thoroughly and safely, for a wake-up flavor everyone enjoys, use Colgate Dental Cream. Remember, Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. From Three Little Girls in Blue, here's Dennis Day singing Somewhere in the Night.
say hello to Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. For Halo Shampoo contains no soap, therefore leaves no dulling soap film. Halo lets hair sparkle with natural brilliance. Even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather to quickly carry away loose dandruff and dirt. Halo needs no lemon or vinegar rinse. Say hello to Halo and goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo Shampoo at any cosmetic counter. next week for another Dennis Day program. More songs, more adventures in the life of our star, Dennis Day. Meanwhile, be sure to use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be with you again next week when you're here. Broadcasting Company.